This is breaking news. This deployment is an example of our continued commitment toward public safety and the results of these investments over the last couple of months have been encouraging. Overall crime in the subway system in February was down and so far in the month of March that downward trend continues where overall crime so far in March is down 15.5 percent when compared to last year. It's clear to everyone watching that we recognize the importance of a safe and orderly subway system, and that is why we're here. This afternoon, I'm announcing the expansion of the NYPD's presence within the subway system. Operation Fair Play, and that's FAIR spelled F-A-R-E, is a week-long operation starting today that might continue, uh, and that will see the deployment of hundreds of offices the do dozens of subway stations throughout the city. Operation Fair Play is a department-wide effort focused on fare evasion enforcement and will be supported by both transit offices and offices from outside bureaus and by members in uniform and in plain clothes. Blatant fare evasion at the turnstiles remains one of the primary complaints from both law-abiding subway riders and the MTA. Our riders should not be subjected to open acts of lawlessness anywhere in our subway system. And that tone of law and order must start at the fair gates. Operation Fair Play is a reminder to those who would think about bringing disorder to our turnstiles and the rest of the subway system. Don't do it. Don't jump. Don't crawl. Don't come through the gate. Make the right decision. Enter the system properly and lawfully. Because if you don't, chances are you will be stopped. You may walk away with a warning, or you may walk away with a summons, just like 28,000 other fair beaters did already this year. Or you may end up in handcuffs, but circumstances dictate, like the 1,700 people did already this year. I'll end with this. Over the past several weeks, the riding public has seen a visible and palpable increase in uniform presence in our subways. With Operation Fail Play, they'll see there even is, more. Uh, downtown Express Rushes. 3, train 2, Kilowatts Avenue, 2 minutes. All right, so obviously, as we told you when we over in Hurt Point and Skimmerhorn, the commitment to transit safety starts with theft of service and keeping bad people out of the system. Most people commit these crimes are not paying their fare, and that's why you see Operation Fair Play happening this week. So with that, we're not going to take a ton of questions. But we'll take some on topic questions if you have them, all right? Can you tell us uh, what stations you're going to be deploying this new initiative? Where, where you're going to be? So we're not even, we're not, because of the fact we want to keep it random and, and we want, we're not going to discuss exactly what stations, but this, they'll be deployed throughout the five bars. Over here. There was two stabbings today, 10 blocks apart in Oakland. How are you going to get these weapons out of the train system? So uh, we're doing a lot, uh, and, and look, the tone of law and order starts at the turnstiles, right? Um, so far for this year, there is thousands of fair evasion contacts, either arrests or summonses. Approaching the station, there have been twenty. From the platform edge. I'll wait for the. Uh, there have been twenty gun arrests so far in the subway system in the first seven and a half weeks. Uh, for people trying to enter the subway system with guns. Uh, 10 of them, actually 11 of them, I'll talk about the 11th, which just happened today. 11 of the 20 gun arrests, uh, they were stopped from entering at the turnstiles. Just this morning in Manhattan, at Delancey and Essex, just before 11 a.m., uh, transit cops stopped an individual, a male uh, entering the subway system. Uh, he went through the gate without paying. He was stopped. He was wanted for a grand larceny. And lo and behold, he had on him uh, a firearm on him. Uh, dozens and dozens of other illegal weapons are recovered, knives uh, and other items that could be used against people. So look, our cops remain focused at the task at hand and they're having success. Okay, you want to talk about technology right here? Um, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Kaz Daughtry, Deputy Commissioner of Operations. So I'm not going to go into details. I'm not going to go into details, but the police commissioner and the mayor has tasked me to try to find new technology that we can implement down here in the subway system. 
using the existing technology that we have here, which is our cameras that you guys see around us. And uh, we're going to be looking for weapons. I'm not ready to make an announcement right now, but hopefully in the next couple of days, when we finalize the uh, you know, deal with the companies, I'll be able to come back here and make a, uh, an announcement of what technology that we're going to be using. But the message is that we are looking for technology that we can currently use down here in the subway system that can detect weapons to keep uh, strap hangers and customers safe. Thank you. Well, right. No, 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 good. Fix the left, had a question? No, answer. Would you, would you say a majority of the arrests you make in the transit system are fair? There is an Uptown Express. Say that one more time on the train. Train to Wakefield, 241st Street, one A good number of them are, yeah. And again, look, look, look at the, uh, this is not about... Soy Vianis y llamo Manhattan Bureau. Estoy colaborando con la MTA para crear conciencia sobre los peligros de surfear en el metro. Las consecuencias son graves y pueden ser No pierdas la vida. Viaje adentro, manténganse vivos. So, look, the goal of our fair evasion enforcement is not to arrest people. I think, I think that has to be clear. It's to correct behavior. Uh, and that, that behavior that weighs heavily on our riders' minds. It's behavior that, that reeks of lawlessness, and we need to set that tone of law and order right when the riders come into the subway system, whether they're law-abiding riders or not. And look, it's not fair to the paying customer. This is one of the top complaints we hear from, from the riders. Why am I paying and this person isn't paying? It's not fair to them, and it's not fair to the MTA that's losing untold tens of millions of dollars a year. So again, this is about correcting behavior and keeping the subway system safe and, and, and our riders ultimately safe. All right, last, uh, last one or two. What we got? Why, why wait? Why wait? Why that time? So let me, let me be clear. Fair evasion enforcement and turnstile presence is a key component to our crime reduction strategy. We do that every day. Every day of the year. This is not something new. This week, we're stepping that up. We're adding an additional uh, layer, if you will, of presence focused on the fair evasion uh, enforcement. And again, that's why our partners are here supplementing us. I can't thank them enough. Uh, we can't do it alone. So we're going to be supplemented from our partners in the Patrol Services Bureau. And like I said before, you're going to see uh, a uniform presence doing this and also a plain clothes uh, component also. All right. Operation Fair Play, there's no more freebies anymore. You talked about weapons coming down. This is where it starts, as Chief Kemper mentioned. This is 800 cops. 800 cops being surged into this system over the next five days at strategic locations based on crime, MTA statistics, and community complaints. This is not a one-week deal. It's called Operation Fair Play, and we're going to do it time and time again. We're not giving the locations. Because you want people to know. Is what we want to let them know is don't think you can come down here and get a free ride and bring your weapons. You don't know where we're going to be, how many we're going to be, in addition to what Trans is already doing. So that's the message that's got to go out. How the National Guard partnership helped at all with confiscating weapons and how is that going? So, the, uh, as we said before about the National Guard, anybody coming into the train station to help us out, we appreciate that help. But this is not about the National Guard. This is about Operation Fair Play, and the National Guard is not, not a part of that. This is an NYPD surge. And again, as the mayor has told us, and you see our team, we don't have boundaries. This might be the chief of transit, this might be the chief of patrol, but we are the NYPD, and together we're going to reduce and make sure reduce crime and make sure people feel safe in transit. Thank you. Is there a known cost to this? How much does this cost uh, to have? The we can. We can. We haven't even done it yet, so we have to look back at that and see. We'll see how many hours it takes. We'll get back to, uh, to you on that. Say that one more time, I apologize. Uh, people who are arrested on the MTA system for committing crimes, they usually have a prior felony or any record to their name. So is there any data how many of these people are really offenders and if, if there is anything and like 
do they have nicotine in it or fentanyl? So a lot of people have prior there arrests. Is, uh, we talk about this all the time. We talk about three, repeat offenders. Two, and we talk about recidivism. Station, and it's a challenge. Uh, I, I speak about this all the time. Look, here, here's uh, some interesting data. Three, Last year three, two, in the transit two, system, there were 13,600 arrests made in the subway system. When looking at those 13,600 arrests, there were five people I'm sorry, there were 124 people that were arrested five or more times just last year in the subway system. And when looking at those 124 people combined, they've been arrested over 7,500 times in their lifetimes. So if that doesn't tell you the story about recidivism uh, and repeat offenders and the challenges we face as a police department, I'm not sure what will. All right, thanks everybody. So, can a citizen, can every day taxpayer citizen? Yeah, we'll come over to you right after this. Thanks, everybody. And uh, if you've got any follow-up questions, just reach out to DCBI. All right, thank you.